Welcome everyone to 7 Minutes or Less, talking about the shows you love or want to get into. Today we will be talking about 24 Season 2. The plot of Season 1 turns out to be a personal vendetta for Victor Drazen, a Serbian military leader who survived a mission sanctioned by David Palmer where Jack Bauer led the operation. By the time two years had passed, the remaining survivors of the Drazen family hired a group of mercenaries to enact their revenge by kidnapping Terry and Kim, make Bauer kill Palmer through coercion to impose an eye for an eye. When that failed, the Drazens involved themselves personally to try and kill Palmer and blame Bauer. Terry and Kim get separated further from each other but manage to make it back to CTU by the end of the day. Jack thwarts the plot against himself and David several times over and they both get to live to see another day. But Terry, Jack's wife, does not. Despite Jack's best efforts, Terry is killed by Nina Myers, revealed at the end of the season to be the primary mole, when initially we thought it was Jamie, revealed in the middle of the season. Jack, in his grief, retires from CTU. Sherry Palmer covered up Keith's involvement when he accidentally murdered his sister, Nicole's rapist. By the time David finds out about this, the damage had already been done, and realizes that Sherry cannot be trusted. This fragments the family after all the hard work and effort everyone put into to David's campaign. Despite this, David is elected president. For those of you who want to know just on the level how the second season is, it's good. Borderline on great. Not as great as the first season, but I love practically everything in this season minus one large storyline that holds very little merit to the overall plot. With some annoying characters in tow and some story arcs that meander, the last four hours of the day are very intense, but it does leave you feeling a bit off how we got to this point. Nevertheless, this season holds up pretty well. Season 2 takes place 18 months after the events of Season 1. A terrorist group called Second Wave is within the United States and plan to detonate a nuclear bomb on American soil. This information passes along to CTU where they call in Jack Bauer to bringing him out of retirement. His connection? A group that Jack was once a part of, he was undercover with, may be tied to Second Wave. Once Jack is on board, his brutal methods begin. This creates controversy while Jack has to operate outside of CTU's authority which creates limited resources for him. At the same time, we watch Kim's side of the events. She works as a nanny to a family called the Mathesons, where she takes care of a young girl named Megan. Megan's father, Gary Matheson, immediately comes across as creepy and untrustworthy. Things become chaotic for her outside the main story, where she quickly goes on the run with Megan in tow due to Gary's abusive methods. Another family we follow closely are the Warners. Marie Warner, the youngest out of two, is getting married to a Middle Eastern man, Reza Nair. Kate Warner, the older sister, while supportive of Marie, suspects Reza may have terrorist connections and privately investigates him during their preparation of Marie's wedding. On President David Palmer's side, projections of casualties are made if the bomb goes off. Grueling debates start on how information flow when reporters find out and certain members proceed with certain authority, which forces David to make tough decisions. Things begin to get intense when Sherry Palmer tries to come back into David's life, testing his emotional integrity. Director George Mason, introduced in Season 1, is delegating CTU's resources with Tony Almeida higher up in the chain of command, holding a lot more responsibilities, with newcomers Michelle Dessler, an intelligence agent, and Paula Schaefer, an analysis under their authority. As the day's events take hold, CTU becomes stretched thin. Jack continues to take matters into his own hands. David is questioned and undermined. Kate and Marie's connection to all of this is a mystery, and Kim falls victim to the day's events consistently. All in all, this is one season you're not going to want to miss. Despite previous statements long ago about Season 2 being an ill-fitted installment within the series, I've had a change of heart. Where Jack's storyline always remained gripping for me, it was David's, Kim's, and the Warner family, along with CTU's events that wavered in quality for me. My change of heart came around on President Palmer's side as I understood the gravity to his actions as the entire country was at risk, included and not limited to other countries that could be involved. Whereas I before thought it was long, dull, and not very ambitious. The Warner storyline does ask you to be patient with it as it slowly comes together. 
This one gives you some surprising twists along the way. CTU's personnel get the short end of the stick as they try to move forward with one arm tied behind their back at all times adding some unique intensity. The only thing that hasn't changed where I cannot find any redeeming qualities is Kim's storyline. Her adventure lies roughly 95% outside of most of the conflict. She knows about the bomb towards the second episode, and just before that, she's already dealing with Gary and his abusive ways and doesn't contribute to the story much. All we see is Kim constantly getting herself in and out of dangers when some of them could have been avoided after a certain hour, which makes for a frustrating experience. All in all, while I don't have a favorite episode, there are some memorable characters, great action and some heart that can't hold a candle to season one. While everyone in this season did an incredible job, brief or long standing, a major shout out goes to Xander Berkeley playing George Mason. His character undergoes something very crucial, really turning his character around, giving the show much needed heart. Some nitpicks include random characters that divert our main characters for too long. There's at least three fake outs of a particular character's well-being, and the villains aren't as memorable from season one. Nevertheless, they are forgivable nitpicks. In the end, I recommend this season. Alright guys and gals, thank you so much for watching. If you have seen 24 or are interested in seeing it, did this review help? Let me know down in the comments. Be kind, be reasonable, and let's talk. Don't forget, I have other reviews on this channel, and please go check them out if you're curious. If you like this and want to see more, do all the things that help out. Subscribe, comment, and like. Stay tuned for more reviews, and as always, until next time.